Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our weekly Communities of Practice Sunday check-in session. My name is Katya and I'm a member of the Communities of Practice team. I hope everyone has had a good week and I welcome you all to a half hour of Dharma, reflection and community connection. If you're a new member of our community, a wholehearted welcome to you. If you have any questions regarding our practices and topics, do not hesitate to talk to us, to the team, um, guided by Venerable Jue. It is customary for us in Australia to begin any meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land. I would like to start today by acknowledging the Darawal people as the traditional owners of the land on which Nantian Institute resides. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all are. And I pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. The check-in sessions have been developed by our community of practice team and community. In 20, 2018 and 2019, we're in a number of community days and then began this weekly check-in sessions in October, 2020. And the purpose of these events were as outlined above, guided by humanistic Buddhism to develop and cultivate our practice and our friendships. And now more than ever, the practice has become vital and the purpose of today is exactly that. And now I'd like to introduce Joy Yeo, a valuable member of our community who will facilitate today's session. Thank you, Katya. Good morning, afternoon and evening to all. Let's start the session with our routine mini mindful pauses. We hope that this will allow us to position our minds and hearts ready for the session and the discussion. Firstly, let's all sit comfortably. Soften your gaze, drop your chin a little, and let your gaze fall gently downward. You can choose to close your eyes or simply let what appears before your eyes be there without focusing on it. Feel your breath. Bring your attention to the physical sensation of breathing, the air moving through your nose or mouth, the rising and falling of your belly or your chest. You may find your mind wanders constantly. Instead of wrestling with your thoughts, practice observing them without reacting. Come back to your breath over and over again without judgment or expectation. I'll be sounding the bell as a reminder for you in the next minute.
whenever you're ready, gently lift your eyelids. This week's Dharma is everywhere, brings us to the limitless space above us. Who remembers the days when young, sitting in a moving vehicle and assuming that the moon was following you? There's a whole science behind this, and it was in fact mathematically justified to prove that our thinking that the moon is following us is an illusion. I also remember the days when my mind suddenly exploded into infinity, when my teacher taught me that the stars that we see are the suns of other galaxies. Would there be an earth in every galaxy as well? The amusement about space is not just one that gives me a sense of fulfillment when I know more. It is about knowing our current limitations in a broader scheme of things broader than the happenings in this earth, than this lifetime, which is probably just a nanosecond to the cosmic world. On the screen right now, you see three apparently different looking photos of the space. The colors, textures all appear differently. But if I tell you that they are all taking the same spot of the space, what do you think? That's the truth, by the way. And it reveals a limitation in our eyes that we can only receive light rays which form a tiny portion of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Using different types of radiation in this spectrum gave different photos of the same spot in the universe. The message of knowing our limitation is important because the entire reality is significantly broader than the data that our eyes can collect and process at any point in time. Same can be said to our senses, other senses as well. Our sense of hearing, of smelling as compared to dots, our vocal cords versus that of the dolphins and the bats. What our sensory gates are collecting are only a small fraction of the constantly changing data points flowing around us. Knowing this may, reminds me to be mindful not to jump into conclusions based on limited data. Knowing this enables a growth mindset in me rather than a fixed mindset anchored stubbornly by dogmas of unquestionable belief. The Dharma of non-attachment, of non-self, resonated deeply with me whenever I ponder into the broad and limitless space. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the stars shining so brightly in the dark skies could have been the remaining light of some dying stars, again remind me that no one can escape the cycle of life and death, not even a burning large star. In the final bit of my sharing, I'd like to share two quotes from the Amitabha Sutra. The first, west of here passing beyond hundreds of thousands of millions of Buddha's land, there is a world called ultimate bliss. In that land, there's a Buddha named Amitabha who has now manifested there to teach the Dharma. The second quote, which is somewhere in the middle of the Sutra, Sariputra, if good men and women hear Amitabha Buddha mentioned and hold firmly to his name for one day, two days, three, four, five, six or seven days, wholeheartedly without distraction, then when these people are near the end of life, Amitabha Buddha will appear in front of them with a host of sages. Putting these two parts together, what can we infer? One says that the pure land is far, far away. The other says seven days you can reach there. My take is that our minds are bigger than space, a pure mind, good man and woman, an awakened mind in resonance with the qualities of the Buddhas, a mind without distraction. These are qualities that explodes our mind into the limitless space, that we are no longer bonded tightly to a point, nor limited by physical distance, that we are one with all. 
And with this realization, as we open our senses back into the space that we have right now, we continue our Bodhisattva path, but this time knowing clearly not to be trapped or caught by the illusions around us. These are some reflections from my mind when it wanders into the space, hopefully not building too much sand castles in the sky. And now I'd love to hear your reflections. Staring into the skies of the dark night, seeing the stars, the moon, and if lucky, some other planets, what do you feel? And what aspect of Buddha Dhamma flows into your mind? So Venerable G mentioned that we are very close right now in space, in the virtual space. <laughs> Thanks, Venerable, for sharing that in the breakout session. Lai says, take a deep breath, quick pause when having difficulties. Chanting helps when having lost in our life, reflection and meditative moment when connecting to the sky in a dark, peaceful night. Yeah, absolutely. And when I was thinking of my problems and looking to the stars, I see how small it is at times. Mm. Very grateful to be in this space filled with stars and clouds where possibilities are infinite. Oh, Phyllis, well, well said, but possibilities are infinite. The light we see from stars come from millions of years ago. The star may have faded, but the light continues, just like our actions and lives. Thanks, Priscilla, for that. Reminds me of the rippling effect that we talked about briefly two weeks ago. The vastness brings us to the concept of selflessness. We disappear in the brightness and wonderment of it all. Thanks, Cecilia. Now keep the comments flowing. We really love it. All this will be converted. All this, the repos of all these comments will continue into our posters and may influence many more minds of the future. The space is limitless and so does our minds. Collectively, our potentials are limitless too. There has been my mantra as I recite Amitabha daily, which literally means infinite light and infinite life. And such an infinity needs to be constantly anchored by wholesome virtues to ensure the potentials are not misused. And thus, we need mental signposts everywhere to constantly remind us the Buddha Dharma, keeping to our practice of good deeds, words, and thoughts, as what Venerable Singh Yun has constantly advocated, and realizing our potentials, our Buddha nature, and our Pratna wisdom. Next week, we will zoom out a little. We will invite all of us to share our reflections on the main theme in this month, that is Dharma is everywhere. I hope that the three sessions on this theme in this month have provided you with some examples on how phenomenon around us can be signposts of Buddha Dharma. In your daily routine starting from after this session, I will encourage all of us to observe things around us with greater awareness. Don't judge, don't evaluate. Just observe how things around us flow around us. Observe how the world or even the broader space above us is but like playgrounds to us. The spaces where causes and conditions constantly train us to improve, to help each other, and to collectively realize a beautiful place for all of us as we walk hand in hand, connecting hearts, and together we stand. And now over to Katya, who will guide us in the dedication of merits. And for this session, I especially I dedicate my little merits to the beings in all the infinite directions for which they have made this session possible. Thank you, Joey. Um, so thank you, everyone. And we hope that uh, this uh, Buddha birthday uh, session was helpful for you and that you experienced the loving kindness of this community um, as it is offered here today. For anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than uh, what today could meet, uh, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us after the session and other um, helpful numbers are on the screen here as well. And as we check out 
uh, this session, we'd like to ask you all to reflect for a moment um, and send thoughts to the loved ones, friends and strangers who may need some care and healing. May they feel the warmth, strength and love of this community as we recite the dedication of marriage together. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And as always, for those who have time, we will be having our usual post chicken discussions now. And so do stay around um, if you do have that time. Um, and again, happy Buddha's birthday. Uh, what a joyful day. And thanks for sharing um, beautiful things in the beginning of the session today as well. Um, otherwise, we will be back um, next week um, at 11 o'clock as always. And look forward to seeing you again on then. Thank you.